Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 112. Please turn to it. Page 112, problem number 5. Page 112, number 5. This is the same exact problem that we saw a long time ago on day number 3, as I explained yesterday on day number 251, that I'm redoing all the problem that we have already done on day one, day one. 1 through 250, uh, we are doing the same problem again but at a faster pace without too much explanation. If you need more explanation, if you need more help, if you feel that I went too fast on something, just go back and watch the original video, which in this case is day number 3, and you will find the same problem being done at a, at a much slower pace. Problem number 5, we are told that y equals to y equals to 2x squared plus 7x minus 3. Now the key to understand, key to, uh, the key thing to keep in mind here is to always re remember that on the GRE, as far as GRE is concerned, in our in our math classes long time ago in the school years, we learned that uh, there are there are even numbers, there are odd numbers, there are positive numbers, there are negative numbers, there are irrational numbers, there are irrational numbers, there are real numbers, there are imaginary numbers, and so on and so forth. Similarly, similarly, as far as the GRE is concerned, numbers come in two flavors. Numbers come in two flavors. They are either nice or nasty. And our job when you're doing the quantitative comparison question is to always make sure that you try out uh, at least one set of uh, one nasty numbers just to make sure that the answer does not change because that's what we are trying to see here if the answer changes. If the answer changes then, then the answer is D. Because here what we're claiming here I'm, I'm doing the exact same thing what I, what I, what I plan not to do here. I'm going into too much detail. I'm going to stop right now. If you need more help in quantitative comparison question, if you need more help in the quantitative comparison questions, what I'm about to, what I was about to do is to uh, uh, the, 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 too much uh, the, all the explanation and so forth as to what these answer choices mean. There are four answer choices A, B, C, D, uh, and a nice Nazi number and so forth. If you need more help in these questions, there aren't too many. There aren't too many practice. There aren't too many quantitative comparison questions in this book for you to practice on, unfortunately. But in the older book, in the 10th edition, which came out long time ago, the old GRE, this book that I'm holding in my hand here, contains seven GREs, and each exam has 30 quantitative comparison questions. These are called quantitative comparison questions. 30 questions in each exam. There, were seven, there are seven exams in this book. There are 210 questions in this one. And you will find solutions to all 210 G quantitative comparison questions on my channel. Just search for just search for GRE quantitative comparison 10th edition, and they will pop right up. Even if you don't have the, even if you can manage to find the old book, uh, which, which which I assume is probably difficult now to, to get hold of. Even if you don't have the old book here, you can still watch the video and you will get something out of it because I put the questions on the blackboard. So anyway, nice and nasty numbers. That's what we're going to do here. We're going to plug in a couple of scenarios of, uh, actually I'm going, to, I'm going to plug in nasty numbers to begin with both the time. And when you're plugging in nasty numbers, the nastiest of all as we know is zero, then comes one, then comes negative, and then comes fractions. Let's plug in zero, see what happens. If you plug in zeros, uh, if x is zero, if x is zero here, then you get, uh, when x is zero, I'm not going to actually do it out, when x is equal to zero, we'll find that y equals to 2 times 0 squared, which is 0, 7 times 0 is 0, and minus 3, it becomes negative 3. So here's our column A. Here's our column A, and here's our column B. When x is equal to 0, when x is equal to 0, which is what in the column A, we have x in the column column B we have y. When x is equal to 0, we find that y is negative 3. In this case, the answer is A. 0 is bigger than negative 3. Let's plug in let's plug in next value here. Let's pretend x is equal to 1. If x is equal to 1, 
then two, one squared is one squared is one times two is two. Seven times one is seven, so that's two plus seven is nine minus three is six. So when x is one, y happens to be positive six. And now obviously answer switched. We went from before it was zero versus negative three. Now it is one versus positive six. Now the answer is b. Since there is a conflict in answer, since the answer switches, there is a conflict in answer. The correct answer is d. The correct answer is d. That's it. Next one. On page number 113, number 6, something that we did on day number 4. We are told that y is more than 4. y is more than 4. And here's our first column, column A, which is 3y plus 2 over 5. And column B, which is... Oh, which is just y. Well, that makes it easy. So let's multiply both columns by 5. Let's multiply both columns by 5 so that we can get rid of this 5 from the bottom. So now we are left with 3y plus 2 versus 5y versus 5y. Let's subtract 3y from both columns so that we can have the y by itself. Let's subtract 3y from both columns. So 3y drops out from here, that was the whole point. So now we're comparing 2 versus 2y. As you can see, I'm not explaining too much here, I'm just doing it. Let's divide both columns by 2. Let's divide both columns by 2, and this becomes 1. So we're comparing 1 versus y. We're being asked, essentially, what this boils down to is, we're being asked to compare 1 versus y, which one is bigger, 1 or y, after, after having been told, that y is more than 4 for crying out loud. So what they're asking essentially here, what, what it boils down to is that they're telling you that y is more than 4 and then they're asking you which one is bigger, 1 or y? Well, you just told me the y is more than 4. If y is more than 4, obviously it's more than 1. The answer is b. Next one. Next one. One fourteen, number seven. On the next page, on page one fourteen, page one fourteen, number seven. This is something we did on day number five. Here is our column A. Here is our column B. Two raised to thirty minus two raised to twenty-nine over two versus two raised to twenty-eight. Now listen carefully. This particular problem can be done two different ways. We can do it in a classical way or we can do it in a quick and dirty way. Again, one more time. This particular problem, if you insist, if you're hell-bent on it, if you want to be goody two-shoes, you can do it the proper way, the academic way, the algebraic way, the geeky way, the nerdy way, the classical way, the traditional way, the orthodox way. The way your math teacher would expect you to solve this problem, the way the people who give you this exam expect you to solve this problem, the people who, the people who give you the exam, that quantity, that quanti uh, not quantity rather, the people who give you the exam, that entity is what is known as ETS, Education uh, Testing Service. Educational Testing Service. Uh, education testing service, something to that effect. And these people expect you to solve this problem, expect you to take this exam as a, as a matter of fact, in a very classical, very traditional, very academic way. They don't want you to do anything quick and dirty. They don't want you to look for shortcuts. They don't want you to do it in, in an efficient way. They want you to suffer. So that's one way of doing it. Or you can do it in a quick and dirty way. The quick and dirty way, let's do that first. The quick and dirty way is to ask yourself, what would happen if instead of this power, power of 30 and 29 and 28, what would happen if you had a smaller power, if, if, it, if 2 were raised to some smaller number? Whatever logic that will hold in a simpler scenario, the same logic will hold in this scenario. The, the concept, the logic, the rules of mathematics are not going to change. So instead of, instead of saying 2 raised to 30, let's make it 2 raised to 3. So what, I'm, what, what we are doing essentially is that we are subtracting 27 from it. Now since we are subtracting 27 from this guy, we have to subtract 27 from this guy, 27 from that guy. So 2 raised to 30 becomes 2 raised to 3, 2 raised to 29 is going to become 2 raised to 2 over 2, and 2 raised to 27, 28 is going to become 2 raised to 
1. 2 raised to 3 is 8. 8 minus 4 over 2. 8 minus 4 is 4. 4 over 2 is 2. 4 over 2 is 2. So this boils down to 2, which is exactly what this is. The answer is C. That's it. That's the quick and dirty way. Now let's do the classical way. Let's do the same problem in a classical way. I need a little bit more room. So I'm going to start from here. The classical way. Let's multiply both sides by 2. Let's put, multiply both columns by 2. So this 2 drops out and we end up with 2 raised to 30 minus 2 raised to 29. And in this column we end up with 2 raised to 28 times 2 which is same as 2 raised to 29. 2 raised to 29. Now let's add 2 raised to 29 to both sides. When we add 2 raised to 29 to both sides, 2 raised to 29 drops out. And we are left with 2 raised to 30 on this side. And here we have 2 raised to 29 plus 2 raised to 29, which is the same as 2 times 2 raised to 29, which of course is the same as 2 raised to 30. The answer is C. As you can see, I'm not explaining too much here. I'm not going into too much detail. If you need more help, you can watch day 5, the videos that I, that I posted on day number 5, and you will find the exact same problem being done at a much slower pace with, with a lot, in, in a great deal of detail. Okay? I will see you tomorrow, where we will continue our journey. Bye now.